Good day and welcome back to Chemistry Videos. My name is Clarissa Sorensen Unruh and today we're going to do an ice table um, calculation. So ice tables, let's first get something out of the way. Stoichiometric cal calculations are very predictive. They're very helpful in lab and they're very much what are what's used in lab and in industry when you want to find a theoretical yield. Ice tables? Yeah. There's a fair amount of literature at the moment that talks about how ice tables are not as predictive, or even if they were, that's not how we would do it today. Um, and that really, um, they're kind of almost a construct that allows us to do some algebra in the midst of um, our Gen Chem 2 stuff. Now, having said that, I'm going to go over them. The reason why I'm going to go over them is because the final exam requires them. Ice tables are still used in certain contexts, and so it's helpful to know something about them. But really, in terms of final thoughts, um, they, they are not as used as, say, the lovely moment of uh, stoichiometric ca calculation when you get on further in courses. So, just take that with a grain of salt. That's my caveat. Let's do an ice table calculation. All right, so consider the Haber process. So um, Fritz Haber came up with this process. It's still the way we make ammonia today. So all right, I think mostly, at least in industry, you have nitrogen as a gas combining with hydrogen as a gas to form ammonia as a gas. Let's say that we had 0.5 moles of nitrogen and hydrogen placed in a 500 milliliter container. The equilibrium concentration of NH3 of ammonia is measured as 0.16 molar. I'm going to calculate the Kc for this process. All right. Having said that, let's put down some thoughts here, right? So let's write over here for just a minute. We need to find the initial concentrations of both. Oh, you guys can't see that. Uh huh. So hard. Maybe I should do that over here. Let's do that over here, since you guys can see over here. All right, how about this? Yeah, you can see that. Let's do N2 initial and H2 initial. Realize, folks, that we need the 0.5 moles in the 500 milliliter container to be in molarity, especially if we're trying to find a Kc. A Kc is talking about the equilibrium con uh, constant in terms of concentration values. Concentration values usually mean molarity, and so we need to find the initial um, concentration of N2, which just means I put the 0.5 moles over the liters, 500 milliliters in liters is 0 0.500 liters, and we get, for both of these, since they had the same number of moles in each, you're going to have uh, one molar of each, right? So, oh, I even have room to write that. One molar. <laughs> All right. The what molar came off a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you guys can see it eventually here. We'll write it, rewrite it again. Okay. In terms of the equilibrium concentration, we do need to write that down too because I'm about to write, erase all of this. So, equilibrium concentration of NH3 is 0.16 molar. All right. Having said that, let's get rid of this whole thing because that's a lovely problem. It'd be great if I could keep it up here the whole time, but I can't. I don't got enough room. So let's move on with life and see what we can do here. All right. So in terms of the ice table, the process we're going to do here, what ice means is it's an acronym. It means it's really a way to track the changes in the reaction. So ICE stands for Initial Change and Equilibrium. Okay, so what are we going to do? What we're going to do is we are going to put the reaction at the top of this. We have to keep track of the reaction at all times. And we're going to put maybe that this is in concentration values, in molarity. And then I'm going to write ice down the sides, remembering that this stands for initial, right? Initial 
change an equilibrium. All right, so first off, initial. We need to use our initial amounts that we were given. So we have them in concentration values. Let's put them in. We have one molar of this, one significant figure there because of the 0.5 moles, and one molar right here. You always assume that whatever's on the opposite side, particularly if it's the products, you haven't made any of that yet. So you don't know how much you got of that. Okay, and you can relabel the molar here or you could erase that because you're saying the whole table is in molarity. You could just put one, right? And that works too. And that's what I'm going to do. So the initial amounts are in terms of actual values. Okay, it's either zero or something you've calculated from the reaction. The change is going to be in terms of x. So it's actually the coefficients number of x's that you're going to come in and put on this line. Now, in terms of saying that, we also have to give a general thought that whatever side the initial amounts are on are the reactants, and the reactants are going to go away during the reaction, and the products are going to increase during the reaction. So generally over the reaction, you would expect that your change in concentration should go down for the reactants and it should go up for the products, which means that not only is this the change in terms of the coefficient number of x, but it's also subtracted out of the reactants and added to the products. So what do we got here? If it's N2, notice there's a 1 in front of that N2 in the balanced chemical reaction. So my change in x is going to be minus x. Okay, Minus because it's a reactant x, 1x, because that's the coefficient number of x's. For H2, there's a 3 in front of that. So I know it's going to be 3x here. And since it's a reactant as well, I'm going to put a minus in front of that. Okay. In terms of this one, this one has a 2 in front of it. So it's going to be 2x. And since it's a product, I'm going to add a plus in front of that, because I expect the products to increase, the reactants to dis decrease. For equilibrium, I'm just going to add, this is really the addition of I plus C. That's what this last line is. So 1 minus x, 1 minus 3x, and then 2x. Okay. In terms of what this is, NH3 is going to be my lovely um, equilibrium amount. So I know that NH3, the value here is point, oh I should put this in a different color, is 0.16 molar, right? So I can add an extra line of equilibrium here. Maybe I could say E in numbers. And I can do this because I was given an equilibrium amount um, and I'm putting this around, sorry, that's kind of crappy. Um, I'm doing that because I was given the equilibrium amount of NH3. So that actually is 0.16, right? So what I know here is I know that 2x then has to be equal to 0.16, which means that x has to then be equal to 0.08. You have to divide both sides by 2, right? So then I'm going to add that in here, right? So 0.16, just make sure, divided by 2 is 0.08. And then my x is now found. I can find the rest of these by doing that. All right, so 1 minus x, 1 minus 0.08 is equal to 0.92, right? 0.92 is kind of my new value of my N2, and 1 minus 3x, right, 1 minus 3x would be 1 minus 3 times 0 0.08. Let's find out what that is. 1 minus 3 times 0 0.08, and that's, wait, hold it, 1 minus 3 times 0 0.08 is 0 0.76. 
All right, now that I have these, I can put these numbers actually into my equilibrium expression. And why don't I? Since I can. And I will. And I think we're going to come up with a small number for the Haber process, which usually the Haber process has a KC that's greater than 1. But I think there were some calculation moments here. All right. All right, so in that case, Kc for this expression. We need to find that, figure that out. Kc, remember, is the products, the concentrations of the products to the power of their coefficients and over the concentrations of the reactants to the power of their coefficients. Can you guys see that? Yeah, you can see it. Good. All right, so now I'm just going to plug in my numbers now that I have them, right? So. I know that my Kc is going to be 0.16 squared divided by N2, which is 0.92, and 0.76 cubed, right? Which is going to be a number that's ridiculously small. All right, it's all good. This would be the Haber process at ridiculously low temperatures. But alas. Divided by 0.76 cubed. And I got a number like 0.06. Three, three, eight, eight, six, two, nine, which I'm going to say 0 0.0634, which actually, because of the one significant digit up here, we would relabel this as 0 0.06, which, like I said, the Haber process is usually greater than one, so this is a bit of a little bit weirdness, but you get the point. Okay, so in terms of thinking about it, this is the way we do ice tables. This is the process we're going to undergo every single time. The only other thing you could do, potentially, before you start with this whole process, is if you are given a KC and you're given the initial amounts, you could actually find Q and think about what Q versus K looks like. And if Q is larger than K, then you know the reaction is going towards the reactants. If Q is less than K, then you know the reaction is going towards the products. And if Q is equal to K, you know it's at equilibrium. So that's the only other consideration you might make if you're doing an ice table, but not in this problem because we were never given the ability to do Q. All right. Until next time, I bid you adieu.